Uh, welcome to the stream. I, obviously, no one's watching yet, but um, <clears throat> I gotta tweet this out. Uh, oh, you know what? I gotta change. You know what? I gotta change the uh, man. That's one thing I always forget to do is change the little thing. So it is not leak code. Um, it is not leak code today. It is. Um, let's see here. Dino. Fresh. Uh, Dino Fresh, um, Golang, um, let's see, uh, um, what else, what else would there be? Like, uh, let's see, Dino Fresh, Golang, um, yeah, so let's see, learning, learning, okay, let's, let's just do all, <laughs> uh, let's see here, going through Dino, uh, plus Fresh, learning go lang okay all right i think i honestly think there's enough buzzwords in that uh sentence to um let's see here uh checking out dino plus fresh um let's see here get overview going over going over yeah checking out dino plus fresh um looking learning go lang right uh, okay, Twitch TV. That's one. There we go. That's freaking stupid. All right. <clears throat> I just on Twitter. I don't know what it is, but I just like the um, just the link. You know, like it's more mystery. You know what I mean? Like uh, you never know what's behind the link, right? Uh, because the little thing didn't load. So, or at least I, I closed it. All right. <clears throat> okay. So um, this was on Hacker News today. I have to talk about it because I make web frameworks uh, for like as a hobby, even though I think I'm gonna stop because what's the point really um okay so there's only so many ways you can like like put things together to make websites uh okay so um it's cool like i love this uh i i love this um you know what it's funny i saw this the other day on hacker news and it the lemon like dropped and it um it like did a little ripple effect right here and the green and the white uh it looked way really cool and like i don't know why they got rid of it but Whatever. Okay. So, um, all right, let me, let's go, let's go over it. Let's, let's do it. Um, okay. So it's set. Uh, here we go. Here's, here's the features, right? So it's TypeScript, um, which is cool. Oh, here it is on the right, by the way, the, the generated Dino thing. Um, okay. So I like the name Dino too. I like the website Dino.land. Like they have really great, um, marketing, I think for an open source project, which I think also, uh, Dino.com, which that must have cost a fortune. Um, it's like a, uh, special, um, bit on top. Like, it's like, uh, I don't know what it's running. I think it's Cloudflare isolates. I don't think that it is, uh, okay. So hundred thousand requests a day, hundred gigs of data transfer, GitHub integration, 32 network locations, 10 milliseconds CPU time per request, 10 milliseconds of CPU time. That's crazy that they can restrict that. That's insanity. I can't believe that. So then they'll give you 50 million. Okay, whatever. So it's like, it's pretty locked down. Um, but, uh, you know, whatever. So that's how they, they're going to uh, pay for the, that's how they're going to pay for um, uh, the open source stuff. Okay, that's fine. Uh, all right, so let me see. Uh, you know what? I, the next time I need to get, so I'm, I need to look at the chat. Uh, okay, so. Next time I need to put the chat on the video because when I export to YouTube, like I, I it looks like I'm talking to myself. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's see. So island-based client hydration, right? So just in time rendering on the edge. I mean, I don't. I assuming you use the deploy, right? The Dino deploy thing. Um, server side rendered on the fly. I the. I, I don't really like just, you I mean, it's, it's just server rent. It's just the HTML was generated on the server and then it got sent to the browser, right? This is kind of new. I, I was underestimate, like, I didn't really understand this when I first saw it. It sounds like Alpine JS or, uh, like Hotwire or something like it sounds, it sounds like HTMX or something, but Island based client hydration um, they have a whole, they have a whole thing, right? Uh, islands, right? So, so it, it, they use preact. It doesn't matter. Um, and, and 
here they're checking if you're in a browser or not, right? Um, and then you're like doing things. Um, on so they'll disable it while it's rendering, and then once it is a browser, right? Um, it's not disabled anymore. This button, these buttons. So that's super interesting. Um, yeah, it's super interesting. I'm I'm into this. Um, I also. I also uh, like the twin, um, twin macro. Is that what it's called? Uh, yeah. So this, um, yeah. So this is like twin, twin macro, right? Um, I always like this. I actually ripped it off in uh, Joy, or like I was doing some experiments with Lisp. Anyway, so island-based uh, client hydration. So that this, uh, it's probably the only unique feature, right? of of this particular framework um so so you'll so it renders the components on the server and then when they get to the browser it um i'm not sure if it re-renders or what but like it i, I don't know what hydration means but I'm, I'm assuming it means like hooking up event handlers and things like that right so so like this set count stuff and all that um it's it's pretty interesting that you could write the same like react code you used to and then you can uh, you can change the count, right? Or you can uh, you can use a little effects or state or whatever, but you don't have to. But it's rendered on the server first, so that's interesting. I mean, that's that's interesting. Uh, zero runtime overhead, no JS. So if you don't use an island, right? You, there's no JavaScript at all, no build step. I don't. What does that mean? I don't know what that means. I, I guess like if you're using like Vite or Vite or whatever, right? Then you have like a build step. Or Webpack, or well, no one's using Webpack anymore. Uh, no configuration. That's good. That's always good. TypeScript support. Okay. All right. So, <laughs> Fresh embraces the tried and true design of server side rendering and progressive enhancement on the client side. Good night from Ecuador. I am newbie on Ruby on Rails because I left Django from Web Dev. Newbie at Ruby on Rails, eh? I mean, you know, we all have to start somewhere, right? Um, Ecuador. That's interesting. Oh, we're in this. We're on the same time zone, probably. That's hilarious. Yeah. No, I mean, honestly, Django, like, I think it is kind of like an also ran, and and really the only thing that Django has that uh, Rails does not is like a built-in admin console. But really, like, how how important is that, right? Because you have the actual Rails console to do admin things. So Rails, in my opinion, is. Uh, still light years ahead of Django, right? And it's still light years ahead of, of most things. Um, so one thing so one thing this does not have, right? They call it a web framework, right? Um, I think that I think <laughs> thanks to me, I think it uh, has been well, not thanks to me, but I think I think I've I've overused it and I think a lot of people overuse framework. It's just gonna be called what we call like a routing engine, right? So this is views and routes. There's no model, right? Um, there's no model, uh, on this, there's no internationalization, um, but it does, it does have, so it does, so it does assets, which is JavaScript and CSS, and it does the views, which are all the same, and it, and it does the, the routes, um, and it does file system routing, which is, uh, I mean, it's something, right? Uh, I think Next.js popularized this, right? Um, what does it say? Highly resilient because of progressive enhancement. Okay, yeah. What I love about this is um, there's a whole section on the introduction on form submissions, right? <laughs> like, like, oh yeah, these forms are a common mechanism for. In the last few years, it has become more and more common for it to move form submission entirely to the client. Um, resiliency and user experience. Browsers have great built-in systems for form submission revolving around the HTML form element. So I thought I thought that was hilarious. What is this Dino framework? So this was on Hacker News today. Um, it's called Fresh. Um, it's uh, it's brand new. Um, it, uh, it it uses uh, React components, well, pre-React components, but it doesn't matter, uh, to like render on the server, and then it sends over the React components, and y optionally, like you can do like client-side stuff with the thing. One thing I thought was interesting about the client-side routing is uh, we can, so here, 
Uh, can we see this? Oh, no, they only have an example here. Yeah, well, one thing I thought was interesting was in this example here, so they so they start with, by importing all the stuff, right, which is kind of like boilerplate but whatever. Uh, I think IDEs can automate this. Um, so, so you have two things, right? So handlers is essentially like a Rails controller, and page props is like the interface between your controller. It's like a context, right, between your your handler, which is like a controller and your view, which is your React component, right? And I thought this was super interesting because it's like a really uh, simple way to like communicate between the two. And it's, uh, yeah, it's interesting too because you can easily test the component, right? So that's one thing that Rails kind of falls down on for me. I mean, testing controllers, uh, but also it depends on how bad how badly you architect your controllers. So yeah, here's some names they have here. And then this is interesting. This interface, you always de declare, it seems like you always declare an interface, right? Uh, and this one, you have results and query as a type, TypeScript type. And then this uh, this type gets passed too between your handler and your page props, right? So like this is like the glue that like f is the context between the two. So that's interesting. And then here you have like a, what looks like a, it looks like a macro. I don't know what this is, but I'm not really a TypeScript person, so I don't really know, but it looks like a macro or some kind of type definition or something. I don't know. Um, but yeah, it takes a request and then it takes a context, just like an express JS handler or something, right? Um, and then here you can do stuff. So in this case, they're just filtering the names constant, right? But this ha happens on the server, right? So like if you make a get request to this uh, search, if you just type in slash search on this, uh, it maps to this slash search TSX file, which is a TypeScript uh, React JS or JSX file, right? TypeScript JSX file. Um, so then anyway, so it comes down here to the page and it grabs the, um, the results and the query from that interface, right? Because data is defined here in this interface. Uh, so here you call render, which... Uh, which I think will return the HTML from this export default function, which is also very clever, right? So like they're exporting two things. They're exporting a handler and that's how the framework will know like what to render is default and then what is a handler is you have to name a handler, right? So it is super simple. Uh, it, it's actually very similar to like where I, my experiments were going, but, but yeah, uh, I like it, it's, it's clean. Um, so anyway, so you get this out and then you could do just like, uh, JSX stuff or TSX stuff where you like fill in the, uh, fill in the stuff with the curlies, uh, and do all your mapping or whatever. Uh, I don't miss that. All right. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I thought this, this is a super interesting, um, this is a super interesting, um, thing. So here, here's another example, right? So like that was a search example, but this, um, this has another interface, right? It's a lot, you have a login, a name, avatar URL. And then it's also, uh, so it could be null, right? As a ty TypeScript, this is a TypeScript type here. Uh, and then this could also, this is the same type. And uh, you just kind of say, uh, if not data, user not found, right? Um, and so I think, um, I do like this because it looks like you can do, like this is a server and this is this is the client. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's nice. I mean, it's super nice. Um, it's really clean. I, I don't know what's up with this render null thing. Oh, that's why I see. Yeah. Because they're going to just re re render a 404 and that's how you do it. Right. So like this is saying a user might not exist. Right. So yeah, this is cool. Uh, I, I do like this a lot. Um, resp and then you kind of resp JSON. Wow. TypeScript can, uh, coerce a JSON response into a type. Oh, well, that's something I didn't know. Yeah. So, uh, you know, that's, that's pretty much it. Oh, the islands thing, right? I think, uh, interactive islands, right? Is that what we're talking? Maybe it's adding interactivity. Uh, okay. So islands architecture. So there's a special like islands folder, whereas like this is, this is something that's going to render on the server, but be like rehydrated on the client, right? So all the event handlers are going to be hooked up on the client. Um, so this is, it, this is super interesting because I mean, technically I think this is like a mix of like server components and client components. So 
I think technically you don't really need to have the handler. I think you, if you're going to use an island, you can, uh, like, technically you can, like, read data from the server in this island component, and then it'll, uh, if it's not browser, right? Kind of like Next.js, right? So Next.js uh, does something similar, right? I want to learn a programming on NeoVim. Yeah, I mean NeoVim. I mean it's great, you know. Like uh, you know, you could do you could do some crazy stuff on uh, NeoVim. Uh, I, I'm still I'm still uh, getting all my little uh, things down. But like, okay, so today I saw this thing on uh, Vimtrix. Um, let's see, uh, what was it? Uh, did we? Oh, we don't have it here. We don't have it. We'll go to the we'll go to the Twitter account. Um, so yeah, this Vimtrix is like really, really good um, for this kind of stuff. Because you can like learn, oh my gosh, are you serious? They don't have Vim tricks? What is it? Vim tricks. Okay, it's underscore. Okay. So yeah, they have a lot of good um, little tricks and tips for like Vim. So this, uh, oh, wait, am I not using the right playlist? Oh no, it just, it just started playing. Okay, let's pick a different playlist. So anyway, uh, yeah, there's there was one earlier, and I think uh, Vim sideways, right? So like here, here's an example, right? Let's let's make it big. Wait, is there audio in this? We're not gonna listen to audio. So we'll we'll make it big. So this uh, this is an example of like moving things from like side to side, right? So like instead of uh, like deleting the thing and like all the stuff, you can just move it. Oh, it's really low quality. Wow. Anyway, so uh, yeah, that's one thing. One thing you could do. Uh, oh, I wonder if I can make it bigger now. Oh my gosh. Can I make, oh, I can't, it doesn't, it's always going to be bad. What is the, what, I can't even get rid of it. Oh, there we go. Um, so yeah, that's one thing you could do. Uh, I also like the, uh, the move line numbers, which I still, uh, I'm still not really like understanding cause I mapped it myself, but, uh, <laughs> I always have to look it up. Uh, let's see, config and vim init. Uh, let's see. So I mapped it to, oh, here we go. All, okay. So you have to select the line, then you have to do alt J. Okay. So like if I wanted to move this down, right, then I could just do this, right. I'm moving it all around, right. So that's kind of cool. Uh, and I could, I could do the same thing with one line, right. Uh, so that's pretty, that's pretty sweet. Uh, and I could like jump multiple, uh, lines. Maybe I'll try this, uh, electronic focus thing. Maybe it's a little better. I don't know. Let's see. Let me let me just play this playlist on repeat, uh, or let me do let me do this as like a radio thing. There we go. Your streams have been the only coding I've considered in the past three weeks. <laughs> Matt coming in. Uh, yeah, I know. I honestly, I similarly have not been doing a ton of programming lately because it's summertime and I, you know, it's it's hiking time. So, so yeah, I haven't I haven't been doing a ton. Uh, but I did see that on Hacker News. And I wanted to. I wanted to go over it. Um, okay. So what was I going to say? Oh yes, that's right. So Next.js, uh, they they have server rendered components, I think, or something, or no, even React. We can do React JS server rendered components or something. Is that they did? Uh, they did something. Yeah, it's React server components. Here we go. So this oh is Next.js. Okay. So um, so yeah, they they I don't know what suspense is, but um, but it looks like that's, uh, this is the thing that you do to, uh, render on the, on the server. I think I'm pretty sure I can't, I can't really tell from the example. Um, can't get static. Oh, okay. So like streaming, styling and fetching with suspense. Yeah. So, so Dino is a little different in that, in that respect. Like I think the islands, you might have to use that browser thing that they have, right? In this right here, uh, wherever it is, right. So there is an interface, right, and you can and you can pass props to this. Um, so it, I'm not sure if you can use is browser. Uh, if not, is is browser to um, to uh, like fetch a file or something, right? Dino dot what what is it file file read or something read file or something. Oh, I don't have my I don't have uh, oh it's oh it's Dino dot read file there we go 
Yeah, that's pretty cool. I've been working on my NeoVib skills right there. We got all kinds of language servers going around. Um, so yeah, this, uh, I think I think you can do this. Um, let's see, const, contents, right? Uh, read file, I don't know, whatever, right? So we can read, where are we, in the islands? So we'll be out, we'll go, come out of the islands and do, um, or we'll just read uh, whatever's in the thing, whatever's in the, uh, the Dino project, right? Which is... Uh, Dino. Dot, we'll read Dino.json. There we go. Uh, whoops, that's another thing. Dino.json, right? So I'm actually kind of curious if this uh, if this will work. Um, okay, so it looks like it did it did render like the thing. So let me see. Let me uh, count. This is the count, right? Okay, so yeah, it's it's still working, right? I also like how how easy it was brew install dino and then uh, i think it was dino like something like create or something i don't know what it was but uh yeah it was really easy and then they also set you up so one thing i did notice too is they completely uh look at that look at this this head right here they are injecting a bunch of stuff like this refresh js um so they're putting this in right and i do like this it's like a server set events right and it just if it detects uh, from the server a new build, right? So like when I uh, when I um, save this, right? Uh, it, re it refreshes the whole page. <laughs> I do I do like this. Uh, it's that's definitely the way to get started for a new web framework. So I I, I applaud them for that. Um, and they also like are completely overriding a bunch of stuff. Like they have defaults um, for development, I think. And then obviously you have your Tailwind stuff, right? Um, I do like this a lot. I think they are injecting the style into the, as a style tag. And I love this because that's exactly what I was thinking about doing. Um, but I think this might be a, a tailwind, uh, thing, a twinned thing, like a twin macro thing, because when you inject these styles directly into the page, inject, when you put the styles directly in the page, um, it, it turns out it's a lot faster than getting another, uh, round trip to the server to get a nut, yet another file, right? So yeah, they're keeping the JavaScript separate, but but uh, but yeah, this is. I mean, it it is nice. Also, uh, I I could not find a single place in here that where is the layout? There's no layout, right? You are not in control of the head or the HTML sections or the meta sections at all, right? Like there's no component uh, or anything. Whoops, there's no component or anything that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that shows you like there's nothing right there's nothing here that has html does not exist uh in this in this file in this project <laughs> so they are completely controlling the head the html on the head which has a lot of has a lot of advantages right um you can't muck around with this so then they're free to inject scripts and stuff and development and like you don't have to worry about assets or anything. Um, I I'm really I'm actually really on board with this because <laughs> I don't really care to like have a layout necessarily. Um, I just want to render stuff in the body, and I don't I don't yeah I don't really care right about the head necessarily. Um, I'm talking about preact or something else. Uh, well, I'm talking about uh, fresh. Uh, sorry, yeah. So I I'm sorry. So fresh is uh, is a new web framework from the people at Dino, right? So they do the TypeScript people, uh, Ryan Dahl again, right? And all those people. Uh, so they 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 have done this thing where they like use Preact, they, they combine Preact, uh, T-Wind, and, um, and some other things together. To, so it's basically, they did the routing and they like are routing server, server side rendered Preact components. Uh, that's how it is. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So. So this, um, I mean, it's it is super interesting because uh, I wonder if I did if I took this away, it probably won't work, right? Um, like that probably. Oh, it will. Oh, there is an error though. Look at that. Can't find variable Dino. Yeah, there it is. Okay. So yeah, so you can use the islands um, just by themselves, right? Like you can, uh, yeah, you can just use islands if you if you wanted to. You don't even need to do the rendering, the other types of, uh, rendering. But I do think, I do think it is nice to, um, 
to do the fetching and stuff separately, but I guess, but I guess with the islands, you don't really, you don't really need that though, right? I feel like, I feel like it's not really a thing. Uh, let's see, adding interactivity. Okay, yeah, I already looked at that. Uh, and then, um, so they talk about the islands too. Um, an island can be used like a page of automatically rehydrating the island on the client. Yeah, JSON serializable. Sure. Uh, and then they also have a section on deploying to reduction, which <laughs> I usually leave out of my documentation, but uh, but obviously they have Dino deploy, so they want to talk about it, right? Uh, can we, is there a way, CLI documentation? Okay, let's see. Installation, Dino run. Okay. So I don't know how to deploy. Is it Dino deploy? Oh, it's it's just Dino. Wait, did they even talk about? This is just for Dino, right? Oh, okay, yeah, it's just Dino. Let's do uh, documentation on the deploy docs. Okay. All right, so we've written like a quick Dino thing. Um, it's done some stuff, and uh, let's now deploy this script. Visiting dash Dino and playing new playground. You can copy the above. Okay. What if I want to do it from the um, from the uh, deployments. I can't, there's no CLI or anything. I'm sure, let's just, let's just try it. Dino help. Okay, Dino. Wait, how do they not have a deploy? How, how is there no Dino deploy? Wow, that's a, that's a missed opportunity right there. I can't, I can't, I almost can't believe it, right? It's almost like that's the whole thing, right? Oh my goodness, all right, well, whatever. So that, that's, uh, I mean, that's, that's Dino, right? Um, that is, uh, yeah, that's something. Wait, 1,000 requests? Oh, a minute, a minute. I thought it was like minimum. $2 per million requests? Okay. Uh, I only get half a, half a gig of memory. Um, I don't even understand what this means, environment variable size. I'm guessing, like, you can't declare that many variables or something. I don't really understand. Uh but yeah, there it is. Uh so yeah, that's that's fresh. Um I I do uh fresh.dino dot what is what is it? Fresh.dino dot something. I don't even know what it is. Let's close other tabs. Uh oh yeah, fresh dino dot dev. So yeah, I it is cool. Um it's really cool. I'm into it, but I'm not really like a, a huge TypeScript person. So I don't uh I don't really subscribe to that. But I mean I will say uh if I do a tree on this there's no node modules, so I, I'm into it. They're definitely hiding it somewhere. Let's see, where does Dino install dependencies? I did see a ton of dependencies. When I installed this, there were a ton of dependencies, right? Uh, let's see, in Node.js, blah, blah, blah. Dino cache, Dino cache. Dino cache help. Uh, okay, I don't know where they're, uh, where, Okay. Yeah, I, I still don't understand where they're putting them. I probably have to do like some kind of uh, thing, but I don't really want to go through my whole system. Uh, okay, so anyway, uh, moving on, right? So I said, this is the stream that I said I would do some go. Did I say that in the stream info? I have no idea. Let's see. I have like a few minutes still, so I'm going to do that. Uh, Dino plus fresh learning go link. Okay, yeah, perfect. All right, so I um, just for just for kicks, I tried to uh, download. I tried to download Go. Um, oh my gosh, I have to <laughs> get rid of all this stuff. And uh, I was like, oh, I wonder how how easy it is to like render a te like a template without any like extra stuff. So the so and I also get the Go lang server the. I also got the Go ty uh, language server going. I got the Go language server. Um, and it's, it's really good. Like, it's so good. Uh, yeah, I'll give you an example, right? So like, let's, um, let me, um, I, st I started out with just this, right? So here, let me, let me comment on all this stuff. Um, and we'll see if it, if it, uh, does what it's supposed to do, right? Oops. Okay. So I, I commented all this stuff. We're gonna, we're gonna retype it down here below, right? Um, so here we'll, we'll make a, um, yeah, here we go. We'll just do this. Okay. So we'll start it. We'll start over again. So we'll say fuck main 
right? And I sta I started with HTTP. So if I hit enter on HTTP, right, it um it imports it, right? So I didn't do that. It just went to the top and imported. And the more I do this, right, so then I could call handle. And also this autocomplete is like really good, right? Um, just like the old Java uh, style stuff, right? Okay, so this, um, so handle func, and then I just give it a thing. Also, it has a, a HTTP server in the standard library. So you know you know what it's going to be, right? Like you know what's going to happen here. It's, it's definitely for, um, wait, what is handler func? I don't know what that is. Okay, hello. What is this music? All right, uh, hello. All right, we'll do that again. And then here, uh, HTTP listen and serve, right? We'll do that, listen and serve. Localhost, 9393, nil. I, I don't actually know what this what this second argument's supposed to be. Um, listen and serve. I also got the, um, it, the tooling's so good that I can just go into the standard library <laughs> and just look at it right um i mean I, you can set this up with ruby but it's not like it's not like a brew install what do i what do i have here i, I could just show you what i have in neovim uh so i have um vim go and then i also have the uh the lsp right uh wherever it is oh here it is go pls right so go pls and um and uh, vim go and then that was it. Like those two things let me do all the stuff. So that was super simple. I, I do like that. All right. So anyway, so I don't I don't know what that second argument was again. Still, what is it? Handler. Okay. So there is I guess there is no handler for when the server starts up. Uh, one thing that uh, I thought was interesting about this Go um, is, fam is famous right on Hacker News at least for horrible error handling. Like you have like repetitive boilerplate all all over and over again. So I thought, I thought a really simple solution to this was actually in the Go docs. Um, they have this thing here, right? Uh, funk check, right? And then all you do is uh, if the error is not nil, you just log fatal and that's it, right? <laughs> so <laughs> so here you can just say check error, right? And then you're done, like handling the error. Um, so now we, need, now we need to do what's up here, which is uh, the uh, root. Well, let's do root, funk root uh and it needs an http writer so http dot write response writer right so here i would actually say uh, http oh i already have it response writer um and then i also need a request handler right a request or i need a request itself and then instead of my render i think i'm just going to do what i was doing before which was uh io so i'm going to hit enter again and then it um it imported again, right? Oh, it also imported a log. I wasn't even I didn't even know. So it it almost doesn't even matter, right? Uh, but I I do miss this from the old Java IDE days. Uh, but here it is. So anyway, so I write string to the writer, and then I say uh, hello. So I say uh, home, right? Uh, or I just say um, root, and then that's I'm done, right? We'll do a new line because Go is <laughs> horrible and uh whatever it's just very um here i'll just copy this whole thing okay we'll get hello going whoops hello i almost said uh i almost said end w hello dot http right okay so then this um yeah this is all it takes right uh that's it i now have an http server so we can run it and i was kind of disappointed actually i was a little disappointed because it was it was just that easy, and also, um, also, uh, it I I, I try I tried to check uh, HTOP right to see the uh, to see the uh, go main go run to see the memory usage, and I was disappointed because it's taking twenty megs. I got like six minutes left. It's taking twenty megs of memory, right? That's garbage. Are you kidding me? If I'm gonna use something as horrible as Go, I want like something that's ridiculous so then i thought oh why don't i just build right instead so then now i have a binary http server right and that was that was a quick that was a quick compile mostly because there's no code i check the i check it again right no requests obviously but 
Oh, it's also called HTTP server now. Four megs of memory. That's what I'm talking about. You can't you can't uh, get that kind of low memory uses except with Rust, which is the only thing that I saw that had one mega memory. That is perfect. That's exactly what I want to see. We'll hit it with uh, we'll hit it with hey, right? And then we'll hit it with work because uh, why not, right? So there it is, right? Uh, Eleven thousand requests a second. Not bad for uh, just a standard library web server. Uh, and then we'll hit it with work. Uh, let's see, HTTP localhost ninety three ninety three. Okay. Also, there's no obviously there's no logging, nothing, but there's a lot of room for like to come down on the request second, right? So like if I see a bare bones HTTP server at around ten thousand, or in this case, work says forty three thousand with the keep alive. If I see that, um, I'm super excited because now I can like add a bunch of middleware and stuff and like have it degrade down to about like five thousand five thousand a second, right? That's super interesting. I like that. Uh, so I'm super excited about this. Um, I I don't really like the Pascal like string thing like Java, but what are you gonna do? I mean, uh, you know, I don't know. So yeah, I also saw this thing uh, like what was it? Grug or something? Uh, it was the HTMX person. Um, let's see, Gr- Grug. Uh, okay, so I think I Grug brand developer, right? <laughs> we got a thousand points on Hacker News. <laughs> it's pretty funny, um, and it and it kind of reminded me of like Go, like you know. So this person is just still writing Java, right? They're like, forget it. I just I'm just gonna keep writing Java, not Scala, not Kotlin, just just Java. Um, and it's pretty funny because they're like, they're just talking about like how crazy front end is, right? Um, but yeah. So I do, I do like the idea of Go. Um, it's it's interesting to me, and it's it's actually really easy. I started to get a little crazy with it, as you can see. I started to see, oh, okay, how can I, um, how can I, um, how can I? Oops, hello. That's not what I wanted to do. How can I render HTML, right? Um, and they have something for that HTML template in the standard library, right? So that's just um this right here they have this like uh sort of handlebars inspired like thing right but you can call go stuff inside of it uh so it is still templates and it's not like cool like jsx or tsx or whatever but what are you gonna do um so yeah this is um it does work uh so that's kind of cool so i was um you know i was wondering how i can like instead of calling render here uh, with the w instead i could call um response writer uh, so yeah, it's all pretty straightforward. I, I feel like it. It does. I didn't. Uh, I didn't really run into too many too many problems um, here. I I was kind of fuzzy on this this uh, syntax for the structs, but it's similar to Rust, where like you kind of just go type item go, and then you can also uh, implement uh, things for interfaces. So I I implemented um, render. Um, so I said you can say uh, render like I did here, and I, you could say uh, struct, and then you could give it an interface like this. Uh, whoops, HTTP response writer, and then from there now you can say you can like override things. So like response writer has a has a method called write, and which takes bytes, an array of bytes. So you can um, you can just do this. You can say a uh, func. Um, Shoot, I don't even know. I don't even know the syntax anymore. <laughs> Let's look at it. Uh, implement uh, interface. Okay. Uh, okay. So yeah, yeah, type I M type T struct. So now that I have render. I have to say um, func uh, W, or I have to say R render, and then I say. Um, uh, M- HTTP response writer or something. Oh, I think I'm just doing the method now, right? I think I'm just saying like write, and that takes bytes, right? Uh, I think it's byte, right? And then it's called b, right? Uh, yeah. So I think I think I can do this, and it didn't complain. So I think that's the syntax for that. So I mean, it's it's not horror. I mean, it is horrible, but it's not like. It's not unlike Rust, I guess, now that I've been learning Rust a little bit. I do like Rust syntax quite a bit more, but there's also quite a bit more to type as well, uh, thanks to the expect and all that, all that stuff. <laughs> but, you know, in the name of safety. So anyway, uh, that's kind of cool. I just wanted to update you on my Go, my Go adventures. Um, 
Oh, uh, I should actually show you that this works uh, instead of just saying it works. So in uh, in HTTP server, right? We can just uh, run main again, and then we uh, we do localhost ninety three ninety three. It actually returns HTML, right? I don't know what the content type is, but oh, it is HTML. Yeah, there it is. So that's cool. Uh, I got a little templating going with Go. I mean, it's very naive. Um, I'm reading the file every time instead of pre-compiling, and I'm reparsing it every time too. Uh, but what are you gonna do? Bobby Towers, nice to see you too. Um, what's up? Yeah, uh, I mean, you know, it's uh, it's definitely something, and I li I like that that I can add a bunch of stuff. Uh, and just keep it keep the memory usage down, right? So here I'm. Uh, we'll hit it with a few, and then we'll go to HTOP and see what it is. Um, oops. Oh wait, I am doing that. Wait, no, no, no. HTTP server. So it's it's at five. <laughs> this is impossible. Honestly, it's I. I realized this was impossible. I, I got. I took Jeremy Evans Rota, and I I wrote a Rota app that just rendered one thing, and. I think the lowest memory usage I got was like 40 or like around 30 something just with, just with rack and uh, like not even Puma or anything, just, just normal web breakers or something. And I only got down to like 30 megs of memory. So this is, this is honestly impossible in Ruby. Like I cannot, I cannot make anything in Ruby and just like plain rack, even without a framework that, that only uses five megs of memory, which is insanity, right? Like you, you should be able to, I feel like. But anyway, I don't know. I uh, Bobby Towers, I'm glad you're here. But uh, unfortunately, oh, you know what? I have 20 minutes left. Oh, I'm good to go. Never mind. I'm still going to go for another 20 minutes. I wonder what else I can do in Go. Uh, oh, maybe I can do SQLite stuff. Oh, you know what? Speaking of SQLite, I have to... Oh, you know what? I didn't even tweet. I have to tweet this on stream right now. I have to tweet this. Oh, oh, one more thing. Actually, I just remembered another thing. So this Twilio thing, SQLite or Postgres, it's complicated. Um, I, I, I'm sorry, but I have, I have to tweet this. Uh, let's see. I'm just going to say, <laughs> let me tweet this first and I'll get to what I was saying. Okay. Uh, let's see. It's not complicated. Just use SQLite in prod. <laughs> okay. There we go. Oh, wait, I actually might want the, uh, the little thingy here. Okay. Uh, all right. So yeah, there we go. And then also, um, so I was I was looking at this thing uh, on the Ruby. Um, oh, you know what? I shouldn't do that. I was looking at uh, the Ruby Weekly or something. What is it like? Ruby something? Uh, a, a flex, right? Okay, there it is. I was looking at this thing. It's a Ruby DSL for making. Uh, you know, like does this look familiar? <laughs> okay. It's freaking Markaby. It's Markaby, right? So I go down and I'm like, oh, is he going to talk about Markaby or like how it inspired him or anything? No. He's like, no, there's nothing. Like I came up with this idea myself. Uh, like I don't see anything about Markaby at all. Um, like, or anything. So I, 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 I tweeted him. I was like, Hey, I DM'd him. I was like, Hey, uh, do you want to talk about Markaby at all? Or like any of the other ones like Erector, uh, Ruby DSL, anything um like oh there's even another one i never heard of right so there's fortitude right um does it have a syntax yeah so like here it is right and then there's another one from the guy who made t tp tp person who made tp uh let's see it's called papercraft right i mean there's this idea has been tried uh like a bunch of times I mean, of course, it doesn't integrate with Rails, but you don't really need it to because you can just call this and then just render it as a string from the controller. Um, but yeah, so I was like, hey, uh, did you want to talk about prior work or anything? And uh, he was like, oh, yeah, just, uh, you know, submit a PR. Now I kind of feel like a like a jerk because I was kind of I kind of came off kind of abrasive. But um, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I think it was, I think it was all right. I think it, I think it, the DM went OK. I don't know. I was just kind of like confused, I guess, because like Markaby, and there's there's Mark. Not only is there Markaby, right? Um, there's also Parkaby. <laughs> um, so there's this, and there's Tubby, of course, right? Uh, you know, I'm all about that. So there's this too. Um, cool, sweet. 
uh, and then this is the original, right, from uh, Y, the Lucky Stiff, right? Um, so there's all this stuff. Um, I mean, that looks super familiar, right? And then uh, Tubby, uh, or there's Parkerby as well. And then there's also Tubby, right? So, I mean, in tu I think in Tubby's case, um, I think uh, there is something. I wasn't sure if there was something in here about that, but maybe there wasn't. Um, oh, okay, so here it is, right? So they, this person actually mentioned Parkaby, but there's no, I guess there's no mention of it. Maybe, maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe I shouldn't do it, All right? I guess I could do the PR, but I don't know. It's not super important, I guess. Um, yeah, yeah, it's a lot. I mean, it's a lot. I've kind of gone down this weird rabbit hole where I'm like the, I know about all these like weird HTML rendering gems in Ruby. I don't know why I have that in my, my brain, but, but there it is. All right. Let me see if I can get something out of uh SQL light here. SQL light three. Uh, okay. I also, oh, you know what? I actually, I actually saw a, um, This readme is not very good. I also saw something about how they recompiled SQLite 3 um, into, um, how do I, okay. <laughs> let's let's go to that other link. This is not helping me at all. I also saw something about like, how to use SQLite, uh, or they recompiled SQLite in Go, but it was like really uh, slower. Um, so it, just, it uh, wasn't based on CGO anymore. Um, Okay, uh, let's see. There are many database, many of those database SQL interface standards. Maybe I should learn what that is first. Golang database SQL. Uh, okay. Apparently there's like a whole interface about that. Cool. Uh, all right, so let's see. We create the following SQL. Oh, maybe I should actually finish my my Golang generated um, ESQL clone. <laughs> Maybe I should actually finish that. Um, oh, yeah, okay. How much time do I have? Oh, I have 13 minutes. Okay, let's see if I can get, get this working. Let me, um, let me, this is all kind of garbage, so I can probably just get rid of all this. All right. Uh, so here we go. I will actually, you know what? I will bring that back and I will just uh, copy over or I'll make a new, I don't, I don't know, um, SQLite Go. Hopefully that's not a, uh, a problem for, <laughs> for anyone. SQLite Go. All right, let's see. Edit uh, main.go. Okay, cool. Oh my gosh, it uh it did something. It actually made oh wow. So if I delete this, oh wow, if I save it, it, it deletes the import, the unused import. I also turn that on too. The every language server, if I save, um it it auto formats the code. So I'm not like a huge fan, but that's just how it is. Alright, so let me see. So this um this looks good. Let me see. So this is how I have to do this. Import Actually, it doesn't resolve. I wonder if it resolves from uh, from the internet. There's no way, right? If I type db or SQL, okay, so that's database.sql. Thought open. Oh, okay, so I I need to specify that I need uh, test dot or whatever dev dot db. So I need to actually I need to actually specify right. Go run main dot go. Yeah, db declare but not used. Oh, it actually. Wait, there's an, it didn't import. Okay, so I need to actually uh, I need to actually import. Um, I don't know how else, I don't know a better way to do this. <laughs> I I could have tried to surround it with uh, with stuff, but GitHub.com/slash Matt in Go SQLite three. Okay. Uh oh, you know what? This is the uh, this is Matt's um. Uh, doppelganger, <laughs> who's like a, a Go programmer. Uh, so that's kind of funny. Let me see. Check check error. Oh, there also is a check error. I is, did they talk about this? What's check error? Oh, they okay. <laughs> All right, perfect. So this is this is the ultimate hack for. I'm into this actually as a hack for. Also, uh, 
uh, this is uh, tabs, not spaces, which I don't know. I'm kind of, I'm kind of letting go a little bit. Uh, okay. So let me see. We're just going to follow this. Um, it's looking good. So I think just that should run no required mod go mod in it. Um, whatever is SQLite go. Okay. So go creating new module. Okay. Go mod. Go mod download. What if I just do it now? Okay. <laughs> oh, I see. Go get github.com slash Matt. Is there a way to resolve? I guess there is no way. Matt and go SQLite three. I guess it's always um maybe it's always go get. I I don't I don't know. It's interesting though. I really have to figure out Go's ecosystem. His downloading. It's a, it's a slow download. Yeah, this playlist isn't horrible, you know? Okay, I was just talking for a lot there. Is it still downloading, really? How big is this thing? It, ha, am I, uh, is it really still? Oh, there's no way. How can it be downloading? Still? Is it just broken? What? What is it downloading? How big is how big is this uh this wrapper around SQLite? It's oh there's a lot of stuff. Installation. Yeah, there it is. Uh Oh, oh, it's building. Oh, I see. It's it's uh it's actually Set the environment and have a GCC. Oh my gosh. Okay, maybe it's just failing. Um, echo Seago enabled. Oh, okay. <laughs> let me uh, let me export that. Seago enabled equals one. Okay. All right. There we go. Yeah. Maybe that was the failure thing. Maybe it was failing silently. Is it really going to take me thirteen minutes to get to get it go? How much time do I have left? I still I have eight minutes left. Is it really gonna take me that long? It is. It is gonna take me. Oh my goodness. Um, you know what, Matt? If you're still on, uh, I am a little envious about the uh, the leave there because it'd be nice to have a few weeks off to not think about programming. Oh, you know what? I am I am uh, gonna install some floors. So I've been looking at SketchUp to like make a 3d rendering of my floor in my house and I'm going to, um, get crazy with the, like, like, Oh, I'm going to put this plank here and this plank here. So I'm super, I'm super excited about that. Is it okay? This, uh, this is not working for me and I don't know why. What if I go to SQL, I go, um, and I just type in, uh, again, let's see, do I have it? Cool. What am I doing wrong? Oh, did it finish? Oh my gosh, it really just took that long. Oh my gosh. Wow. That's something. Okay, so this is actually working. Cool. Let's see, what else do we have here? Um, okay, just SQL strings, cool. Uh, wait, where did user input come from? How are you going to prepare a statement with no... Oh, I see. Okay. So we can we can actually just run this. Uh, we can say db um, exec, right? It's always it's always the same. <laughs> it's always the same. How do you? Uh, is there a way to do multi-line strings and go? Multi-line strings go. Uh, okay. Backticks. There we go. That's much better. Create table, users, uh, whatever. Uh, if not exists. ID integer primary key. Got to do it, um, and then everything else is gonna be it's gonna be text. <laughs> I'm giving up on uh, on types in SQLite. Uh, it's just gonna be text. So let's do. Um... Oh, I I you know what I saw this thing, uh, on uh, I saw it on a Hacker News. Uh, it's a um, it's a VPN, Mol Molvad Molvad. 
And uh, what's what's cool about Molvad is um is when you go to sign up, right? Oh wow, I shouldn't. I probably shouldn't have this on here. Get started. Uh, I just doxed myself. Okay, so um, so when you generate an account, you generate an account number, right? Um, <laughs> and then you uh, they just give you this number, right? It says, "Don't lose it. It's the only identifier. No email, no username, right?" So they just generate a random number for you, and then all you have to do is give them the number back, and then you're logged in. And in fact, they already just just doing this. You, I am now logged in, right? I actually have an account, my account, right? <laughs> I I actually have it now, which is which is insane. Um, that was like the smoothest. This is the smoothest login for any web service I've ever used. So anyway, I thought, oh, you know what? That's pretty cool. So we could do num uh, and we just do text, right? Or we can do uh, like token or something like, I don't know what it is, t t uh, token or like identifier, maybe identifier. Well, the ID and identifier, eh, we'll just say number, uh, but it's text, not null unique, right? Or unique, not null, whatever you want to do. Okay. Let's see if this runs. Uh, also, oh, created at, um, is an integer. Oh, you know what I said? I said that I wasn't going to do integers. Integer, not null, um, default, uh, Unix epoch. There we go. Oh, cool. I might use that. I need to watch the new Star Trek. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, it's so true. Like, and I think they, I'm not sure if Mulvad, um, has, I think they have servers around the, the world too. I think they're, headquartered in switzerland or something but i think um i think they have servers around the world so you can easily say oh i'm from this region or whatever okay so let's see if i actually create this uh if i actually create this database okay so it looked like it it looked like it worked um let's see is the database here there it is devdb devdb let's look at schema there's my there's my beautiful schema right there all right, so let me uh, let me insert something here. DB uh, prepare. We'll do a prepared statement because you know it's just faster. You know it's better. Users uh, and we'll say um, a number, right? And then we'll say values. Um, there we go. And then um, so that's good. And then is it is it question marks? Yes, it is. And then we will say, uh, now we have a statement, right? Statement error equals. And of course, the check error uh, hacked for Go to uh, not uh, yell at me about unused error. So then we can say statement exec, and we will give it the number, the random number. You know what I, I thought was funny about Rust is that they don't have a random number generator in the Golang uh, random number in the uh the standard library these you actually have to import a you have to download a crate to like generate a random number it's insane so let me see uh rand what what are we gonna do crypto or math we'll do math um rand uh and we'll do int n int is a what 32 64 as an int 64 non-negative okay so I think, yeah, I think I would do in 63 n, and then it's a function that takes a non half open interval of the default source. So here we'll just say, uh, you know, we'll just do in. I don't know what I'm doing. Int n, um, and we'll just do. Can we do that? <laughs> we'll just uh, actually, you know what? Their number was like kind of multiple numbers together. Maybe I will do that. Let's do, let's do uh, uh, up to nine 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 every time. So we'll do parts and we'll say, uh, part one is, uh, we'll just do this. And there's probably a better way to do this now that, I'm, <laughs> now that I'm looking at this. So let's see. Oh, I have one minute. Oh my gosh. I, I at least need to, uh, insert a record into the database here. Let's see. So we'll just do since it's a string, right? We'll just do, um, oh my gosh. Uh, I O I think dot, uh, uh, scan is it scan no it's io dot uh dot uh oh my gosh is it print no it's not even io it's format oh my gosh 
dot uh, uh, not scan. It's um pr- uh, not print. It's a uh, str- um shoot. Oh, s s print s print f. Um, and then we could say percent, 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 s, percent, s. There we go. I'm look. This is real Go programming because I'm repeating myself over and over again. This is perfect. This is exactly how I imagine Go programming to be. Okay, so uh, they are. Oh, they're undeclared. Oh my gosh. Okay, we'll just change this to. Uh, oh, you know what? I found a cool Vim thing to do this, but I forgot it. All right, so uh, this is looking good, right? Um, in fact, we can just. Um, we can just use this. Wait, what is what is wrong with it? What is it telling me here? Part wrong type int. Oh, 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 geez. Okay, I can't use percent s. Okay, so we will change percent s to uh, percent s to um, percent i g. There we go. Oh my gosh, are you serious? <sighs> okay, go lang. Uh, S printf uh, integer format or something. I don't. What is it? Does it tell me? I don't know what it is off the top of my hand. Off the top of my hand. Top of my head. D. Oh my gosh. Of course it is. Oh my gosh. We're gonna. We're gonna, just gonna go through this again. I don't. All right. Uh, percent D. G. There we go. Done. Okay. So now let's see. This actually returns an error too, right? I think. It returns the number of rows probably that were inserted, uh, or oh, no, it returns yes the response and error, and then of course I have to check the error. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I I love this so much. It's so it's so good. <laughs> All right, so let me see. There's like so much repetition. All right, perfect. So that that worked. Let's let's check it. Um, DevDB. What am I? Oh, I'm one minute. I'm two minutes over. Let's check the schema. Let's check users. Um, select from users. Oh no! There's no u. There's no user. Insert into users number values. Um, so that that stinks. It definitely did not do the thing I wanted it to do. Even though it seemed like it, it seemed like it did though. Uh, this is this is kind of confusing me. Okay, so the um, format s print f. What does it do? It returns a string, right? Okay, let me see if I can just insert anything. Hello world. Right. Let's try it. I mean, I hope it's not a different database every time. Right, like it's not recreating. Select from users. Oh my gosh, it, it's really, it's really not. Uh, insert into users. No. What if I, what if I uh, get rid of that? It should throw an error, right? Whoops. All right, I, I'm, I'm still, I'm still over. I feel like, uh, yeah, I'm three minutes over now. Oh, it didn't even throw an error. Rm dev type db. So it's actually recreating the database every time. Well, that's not good. Um, because it, it should have thrown an error here, right? Oh, I'm, I'm ignoring the error. Oh my gosh, are you serious? Okay, let's see. Statement. Oh, it didn't even, it's not even getting past this. If oh my, This is how easy it is to ignore errors and go. It's that's so bad. That's like, it's so wrong. Um, okay, so here we go. Can I design? Okay, that's fine. State, uh, statement is actually, uh, Okay, res. Okay, so that uh, it should. Wait, what? Oh, it doesn't like this, I guess. The. Oh, it doesn't like when I redeclare. Res. Okay, so that it is. Oh, it is. No, it was working. Shoot. Are you are you serious? What if I just do an exec though, instead of this? Let's do uh, db exec. 
All right, insert into users number values. Do I need? Can I do? Can I do this with with this exec? Okay, args. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, let's see. Format dot s print f percent d percent d percent d percent d. Right. Okay. There we go. Uh, part one, part two, part three, part four. Okay. Oh, can I give this a range? Because I don't want it to be less than a thousand. Int n. Uh, half open interval. Hmm. Looks like I can't give it a minimum. Oh well, I'll have to figure that out later. Okay, so let me uh, let me check this out. SQLite three dev db. I <laughs> no such table. Oh my gosh, are you serious? Wow. Okay. Uh, so that create table if not exist users. Cool. Sweet. Res one. There we go. We can just do that. Okay, no new variables on the left side. Okay, error one. I don't know, is that fine? Okay, res. Oh, maybe it doesn't even run because res was declared but not used. Is that a warning? Or does it run? Or I don't. No new variables on left side. Can I initialize variables? Okay, I, th I think that's a warning. I think that's okay. Um, Golang ignore return argument. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I can't believe this isn't working. Are you serious? Underscore. Okay, we're gonna skip that. That's that's freaky. That's that's weird and and gross and freaky. Uh, no new variables. Okay, so res. Um, okay, so let me delete dev db again, and I'll run it one more time. Okay, so there definitely is no, okay, all right. <laughs> res one, uh, I, I guess I can uh, print it or something. I don't, I don't even know what I'm gonna do here. Res, what is res? Is a SQL result? Okay, so that's an in 64, and then rows affected. That's a method, right? Um, but it's an integer. Oh, oh, it's oh, okay. So I don't. It's not. It's a uh, like property of a struct or something. I don't. All right. Oh my gosh. Okay. Do I really have to do this? <laughs> let's uh, let's do it. Here we go. We're gonna do this again. Res one dot uh, last insert ID. Um, is a fun value. Uh. Uh, oh my gosh, that returns, or it returns error, right? Okay, so I, I can't even, uh, now I have to also check another, forget it. We'll just write, um, func check result, and then it, it takes a, what is, what is result again? Whoops. What is res? res is a sql dot result r sql dot result uh okay i wonder if it can tell that i'm not using it i wonder how smart go is <laughs> the go the go static analyzer is check result res right let's see is it <laughs> is it going to say it's unused oh perfect <laughs> it's no, it's no longer used Okay, so create table users. So this this should I feel like it should fail, right? 
Okay, so that, that did something. Um, so wow, I can't even, uh, I can't even run the, run the thing, right? Okay, so that's that. Select from users. Okay, there it is. There it is. Oh my gosh, only nine, only nine minutes over. Ten minutes. That's sad. All right, uh, so that's, uh, like, go. Um, I, I'm definitely not gonna, you know what? What if I run this again? It should fail, I feel like. It should, uh, it should split something out. Okay, yes, perfect. So there it is. It's a panic. Table users already exist. That's what I was looking for. Yes. Okay, perfect. Uh, if not exists, users. So now if I run this, it'll be fine. It'll just insert. Oh, unique constraint. Whoa, what? Unique constraint failed. How is that possible? It's a random number. Oh, wait, no. I, I used... um. No, I am actually... What? <laughs> what? What what is the number? Wait wait wait. Wait why, how is that unique not null? Okay, I really have to. I have to go. All right, so that was it. Uh, that's me learning. That's how I learn things. I learn things by doing, and I do them horribly, and then I learn them. Um, Bobby Towers, thanks for stopping by. Matt, uh, Dark D Mario, really appreciate it. I, I'll do some Ruby stuff um, soon at some point. All right, but I think uh, I'll be back tomorrow. Uh, my next stream is going to be probably Rust, I guess. I don't know. Like, I don't know. Maybe maybe I'll look at more JavaScript web frameworks or something. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. <laughs> All right, uh, that's it for the stream. Uh, appreciate it. Oh, wow. Uh, Bobby Towers, thanks for the follow. Really appreciate it. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow. So see you. See you later.